Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holzman. This is where we talk about how to uncover what's what in SEO situations from someone who's been there on both sides, an independent local business owner and a professional SEO. I think all of us, business owners and SEOs, are way too bought into the fear of missing out on some aspect of SEO. You know, we're always looking for some sort of easy button and not trusting really what we can actually already see in the SERPs. Anyway, I just think that that may be worth its own episode, but not today. So anyway, the short version of Confessions is, if you're an SEO, this is all for you. And if you're a business owner outsourcing your SEO or doing it yourself, these episodes are my way to help you understand better how to hold your SEO accountable without micromanaging or to be able to tell when you need to start outsourcing your SEO. Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is season two, episode seven. Um, I'm toying with the topic of this, but before I um, before I get started, I I want to confess a little something. You know, when when I initially started contemplating what I'd be talking about this week, truthfully, I was a little down. Um, last week, I I totally revamped the testing site environment. Um, even though I'm only testing um, three times a week. I, I felt I needed to get things more automated, and um, that was primarily so I'd have more time to spend in the server logs. And I wanted to try out um, something, and I'll tell you about it here shortly. But anyway, so I was a little kind of like the thought of you know how you future futurize things. It's like, what if I go to all this effort to change it? I bring in more automation. And I'm only testing three times a week. And what if nothing changes, right? So um, I I just kind of pushed through and decided I was just going to do it, right? And uh, I was practicing, uh, just looking at server logs, and it just sounds luscious, doesn't it? But uh, but anyway, I'm I'm feeling much better about it, and I'll share why at the end. So here's where I am on the topic of, and if you're a longtime listener, you know. Um, I'm an SEO tester, but I think we can call it. I mean, it looks like the end of SEO testing as it's been since I would say around 2019 and now evolving onto, you know, how do we do these tests? Um, how do we do things different that, differently that we haven't quite figured out yet? So does that mean that I'm saying SEO testing is dead? Of course not. Um, this isn't the first time SEO testing protocols have had to change. What we did in 2015 when SEO testing really started uh, with, a, with a bang, um, things worked for a while, but then even those initial um, efforts, you know, they had to be changed, had to be refined. And then there was the second generation testing after Google launch, launched its uh, AI. I mean, it was really, um, you know, they started to interject more and more volatility into the SERPs. So we really couldn't get steady readings. Um, they were always all over the place. Most tests were inconclusive. Well, once again, we're now at the crossroads of, of SEO testing. Something has to change. It's clear that what we could do previously to develop SEO testing, to, to tease out the hints about things that would help a page get indexed or boost an existing page, whatever we were doing before is now no longer working. Uh, just to share this a little bit, tests could be set up, launched, and you could have a finding within five minutes. Well, that's just not possible anymore. It hasn't been possible for a long time. And so then it was like, well, you know, maybe it's a waiting thing. So can we wait a day or two or a week, run for a month for things to, to settle? Well, sure. But now even that isn't working anymore. And it's not because I, Carolyn Holzman, decree it, but it's the reality of testing. Our test pages, as we've had them, they were basically orphaned pages with no backlinks, no traffic. 
Not that hard to negate if you're setting up a filter or adjusting an indexation threshold. You know, even a massive spam network that uh, was discovered earlier, uh, I should say late last year, and by some calculations had taken over as much as 15% of Google's primary index, granted only in the back end of the SERPs, but it went poof, gone. You know, now in my opinion, I'm not unbiased, um, they, in my opinion, pose far more danger to Google than our puny little testing pages. Maybe we were dolphins caught up in the tuna nets. Maybe we were targeted. I don't know. But in order to test, the next move is going to be, I believe, where we start testing in live environment of the search engine uh, results pages, SERPs, in case you don't know what those are. You know, and that's going to be in the same place where every other business and e-commerce interest lives every day. And, and that's challenging because we still need to create tests that we can isolate. Now, it's not impossible, and I'll share what has happened shortly. So in that pursuit, the new test site on the public indexation project now is real content. Uh, granted, I can't get away from fake keywords, so there, <laughs> it's laced with some fake keywords so I could find the page once it was indexed, maybe ranking someday. All right, so it's you know kind of a similar test idea where I have a, um, a simple keyword I wanna know, you know, is, is Google reading simple HTML, which of course it, it, we know it does, but it's nice to test and have it confirmed. And then there's another set of words that are only revealed if Google is JavaScript rendering. And so there's a little more automation in the environment so that I could continue to test just three times a week. And here's the new part I'm going to share with you. Um, I'm going to start reporting daily. That's yes, daily in YouTube. And I would say I, I call it like from the front line of what I'm seeing in the crawl logs. So I'm actually playing around with it. So it's like a game. It's called crawl or no crawl. You can subscribe on YouTube and get the notifications when the day's video is published. And these are going to be my daily notes. They should run between one to three minutes and to just give voice to what I'm seeing in the server logs, not just of the test site, but 10 to 12 other sites that have various traffic levels, just like sampling gives more accurate data. I thought looking at the logs of other sites would be useful. So why focus on crawls? Well, full crawls are the gateway to the dollar for organic revenue. There was just no way around it. And, and follow my logic here, working backwards. No traffic without indexation. No organic traffic without your page being found somehow and not by people who know you, okay? And there's no indexation without rendering. And no rendering without successful bot crawls. And if there are no bot crawls, well, we're jack out of luck. So this iteration of the indexation test is real content. And this time I'm actually incorporating the instant indexing WordPress plugin. To be clear on this uh, YouTube channel, the value in the videos is the content, not the production. And, you know, I always share short links, but I'll also put this in the description if you want a link to the channel. It's uh, one of the bit.ly links, B-I-T dot L-Y slash crawl or no crawl. All one word. And you can subscribe on YouTube. Now, the idea is to get fresh off the server logs with confirmation, um, like are the, the server's running over with rendering refresh calls, you know, then you know it's a good day to maybe submit new content. If it's a bot ghost town, maybe that's the day not to sweat over when you see your, your content stuck in Google search console without being indexed. Just to give you a little more control of your day. Once I get that reporting system down, the next thing I'm going to do is develop those videos into a standalone Amazon Alexa Daily Brief. Now, that's going to take a little finesse, 
but I figure between YouTube and Alexa daily briefs, that would make things available. So then it's really up to you whether or not you care how your day goes, if you want this information. So stepping back a little bit, I had some feelings about all this testing change. You know, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, oh, that's great. I'll just change everything I've been doing for a couple of years. I'll be honest with you. I was annoyed. I was vexed. I mean, it's a super pain in the ass to refigure testing protocols. And then this week happened. This week, Monday's test page actually indexed. I mean, I almost fell out of my slippers at 6 a.m. And it's been a long time since I was able to index one of these test pages. I, I'm sure there's a, ru- a rush of dopamine. And I literally could not stop smiling all day on Wednesday, discovering that I published on Monday and it was indexed on Wednesday. And I was able to trace through the server log records the date and time of Google's first visit which was not a render crawl. It was just an HTML pull. And today, when I checked the cache date of the page within Google, guess what? The cache date was the exact date and time of the first crawl. Not only could I pull the page up via the regular old plain fake keyword, I could do it with the keyword that was set up via JavaScript, which meant For the first time in a very, very long time, we're talking almost six months, I could confirm with certainty that rendered indexing was on. And and that's where all this got started. If you remember last spring, which is almost last year, when Google turned rendered indexing off. Well, we wanted to have a way where we could tell with some certain certainty, you know, was Google indexing new content and was Google rendering JavaScript content. So I'm happy to say I'm hot on the trail on how to set up new tests. Now, two more tests this week. And remember, you don't have to wait until Fridays to get caught up. All you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, Crawl or No Crawl, and then you'll be the first to know. I am definitely pleased that this worked out. But even now, I'm sure there'll come a time when this doesn't, and we'll just have to figure it out again. And that's what SEOs do. So SEO testing is dead. Long live SEO testing. (laughs) That's going to do it for today. Thank you for being a listener. And a special thanks to you, the sponsors of Confessions. And if you'd like to become a sponsor of Confessions, um, just go to Google and search for Confessions of an SEO Sponsor and go to the sponsor link. I'll also put that in the description. As you know, Confessions is everywhere podcasts are available. Please subscribe. It's one of the ways podcasts get rated. And if you haven't settled on one source for your podcast, you can just Google Confessions of an SEO. You can't miss it. All of us stand to make more business and success together when both the SEOs and the business owners understand each other and Google better. It's been my pleasure to be your host, and I'll see you in the service.